Welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot going on for you on our T-Bucket build, making some super progress. Brake lines, third member, rear brakes, front brakes. We got it in this one. So in our last episode, we got our calipers on, we got our rotors on, we got our bearings packed, got all that in, steering rods in on our T-Bucket, and our steering box. As well as we got the frame cleared out, which looks, I mean... <laughs> I'm loving it, right? But we ran into a bit of an issue in the back. Did get the rear axle on, but I totally forgot how much these weigh. And we got to get the third member put in. And uh, it says it weighs 100 pounds, but this thing weighs more than 100 pounds. And there's no way to drop it in that sideways. So we're going to have to unbolt that, pull it out, install that. But that's not the only thing we're working on. Now, you can't have brakes without brake lines. And I ended up opting for the pre-bent AN3 brake set, which is pretty much made directly for the T-bucket here. But besides getting a box with pre-bent brake lines and no instructions, I also got a box of nothing but miscellaneous hardware, fittings, bulkhead fittings, residual valve, and a bunch of brake lines. So, no instructions, got a general idea of how to put it together, but still kind of funny. So this kit here, with the brake master cylinder, here's your two outputs here. One routes around the outside of the left frame, through the Vega box, through the frame down there, wraps around the front, there's another pin down there, and then goes right to the caliper there. For the second output, it routes directly to the back and through the frame and stops. Now that kit stops literally right here. And then from here on, you gotta try to figure out how you're gonna do it. Now, it's not that big of an issue, but definitely would be nice if it pushed, the kit pushed everything back all the way. Now, while it won't be too hard, it's still interesting that they went through the frame right here, as there's probably some other ways to go. Not too sure. Now for our small block here. We did have to get some smaller motor mounts, because down here, these are more of a newer style and they were too wide for what we got going on. So I did get some smaller, thinner ones that we'll install. And I'm hoping to get to that in this build. We'll get these horns off here. And then I had to get a new starter because the starter that was on it doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. But that's not the only thing. Along with that third member that came in, got ourselves a nice little transmission mount, economy style. So we'll get that put in as well. So let's get to work. All right, guys, so if you caught episode two, you would know that we had some issues with the front actual calipers and Speedway ended up subbing in a different style of caliper. For that, we're gonna need 10 millimeter banjo bolts for this which will change it from 10 millimeter over to our AN3, which we have our adapter. So it's a banjo bolt, it's 10 millimeter, AN3, blah, 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 whatever. I look back at this entire ordeal, this probably would have been much easier to put these on before I actually put the caliper on. Because now I gotta try to somehow wedge my finger between this steering pivot arm here and the bottom of the brake caliper. Well, we ended up having to take it off. That kind of sucks. It was hard to find this part here. So we're going to use a T-fitting with a jam nut for that hole down there. And it's our AN3. So it'll go right through the frame where the tab's been welded on. And then the jam nut will go on the other side. But I think we should put the line on first because once it's in there, I don't think this thing is actually going to come out, to be honest with you. Here's our pre-bent line. That'll go right down in there. And like I said, once with that T fittings in for the bulkhead fitting, that line won't go on. So go ahead and get this just kind of loosely put together for now. So we can kind of adjust on how we're gonna do it. And then for this one, we're gonna need a 90 for right down there. So I did finally go through everything and in, in inventory at all to make sure I had everything and I do. Surprisingly, no missing parts, but we will need a jam nut for that as well. I saw some people saying that they use Teflon tape here. I'm not too sure why. 
because if you haven't used the AN3 style, that flare cup is your seal. So there's no reason to. And then we'll push that through the frame, like just like that. So like that, and then over there. Oh, bulkhead fitting there. And then, oh man, I knew I was gonna probably not be able to pull that off. And then we'll put this on. And then, oh my God, is a hole too small? Get out of here. Go ahead and pop these out right there. And we're gonna use these special 90 degree MPT 18s. Get these nice and clocked in the right spot. So I completely screwed up here and I did the front brake line, but now I have to build essentially an entire residual valve and brake pressure switch system. I couldn't get it in and uh, the directions are a little bit backwards, but hey, it's on me because I probably should have read ahead and see that way I could have figured it out. So we had to remove the entire master cylinder. We have our parts, we have our Teflon tape and we have our razor blade we got from the mirror upstairs. Now, we're using a two PSI residual valve here, pretty much a T connector, our brake pressure switch, and then our MPT AN3s. So we need to put all this together, but I did read ahead to make sure we didn't screw up again this time. We'll cut off the excess here, make sure nothing gets into the system. And we're gonna thread that right into there. Did I mention this is like the best tool in the world? Probably should use a pair of vice grips or channel locks, but whatever. So about a thread down and I'll just roll it just like that to get that excess off. We're actually making progress on that. Even though the directions suck. And that final fitting We'll actually go through the frame and mount them all together there. God, I swear I hope this doesn't leak because all that's going to have to come apart again and this redone. So we'll push that through there and thread that right through there. The other side is actually chamfered just a little bit so it sits right in there. Watch. Probably won't have room for this damn socket because that's in the way. I knew it. Totally knew it. I can never seem to win. Yeah, well, you guessed it. I got lucky, and I followed the directions again, which I'm probably done doing at this point. And I'll just use it for reference, because they're ass backwards. So we got the front brake done, and we got the master cylinder put back in, and we got our brake pressure switch in there as well. Now what we need to do is get the back plumbed up just up to that main bar there, utilizing our grab bag full of random parts. So let's see what we got going on. The manual doesn't really go too much in depth here on this, so we're really gonna have to try to figure this one out. There is a residual valve we're gonna use here as well as another one of those two-way valves. But let's check it out. Man, they must sell a lot of these in order to actually get their name printed on there. That's some high volume stuff right there. But I guess what this does is it prevents the rear end from locking up with the brake system before the front end does. Kind of an old school setup, I guess. So we're gonna need another AN3 fitting here, AN3 fitting there. One of our valves that we have here are two PSI purge valves, as well as our little adapter nuts we got going on and some Teflon tape. So for this, looks like we only need our 1-8 to A and 3 on that end there. And uh, glad they labeled it. It's pretty cool. I think this is our in. Oh man, it's one of these stickers. Come on. I think a black would have looked a lot better down there. That way when you're on your back with your buddies looking at the bottom of the car, you can show off your black anodized little valve and that would be damn which way
just like that. Pretty neat, almost like a pipe, like a crack pipe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so I actually wonder if I put it together, we can blow through it and figure out if you got the right way this thing is going. So it was pretty right to me. So we had to make some final adjustments on this, but we did have to make another trip down to the good old tractor supply to get more stuff. And this is gonna mount right in here, just like that. We're gonna do nut, well, bolt, actually. And then we're gonna do lock washer. And then we're gonna do a bolt. Now, we're not gonna hook up the lines right now because I do need to take off the rear end again, which I'm not too happy about that. But I'll explain that to you here in a second. But this line is gonna run back and up. But I'll show you exactly where it goes. I didn't bench bleed that just yet. We're gonna wait just a little bit before we do anything further here. We do have the lines that go from here to here. And then the next line is gonna run along this here on the left side, up and over. And then we're gonna go right through the frame there. But before we do all that, Unfortunately, if you remember in episode two, we installed that. Well, the differential's in, and that has to come off again, which I made that mistake. I didn't really bolt it in, so I'm just gonna pull it back. We're gonna jack up the frame in the back here. We're gonna slide that back, do some gasket sealer there with our gasket, and then drop our rear diff in. Well, third member, whatever you wanna call it here. Well, nobody likes doing things twice, but we gotta do it. I guess before we get started, we should cue the music because uh, maybe it'll help me go faster. We're getting absolutely low on room. So this is gonna go right here. This thing is not that heavy, but it's just awkward. The size of it is awkward. I think it weighs about 105 pounds, 110 pounds, but yeah, it's just gonna suck to pick up and line up, I don't know, 20,000 holes here. And look, it came with Permatex. Imagine that, already in the pumpkin, ready to go. There's like a hundred different types of this stuff. And I'm convinced that it's just food color and it's been added to it. And they tack on an extra 20 bucks and call it something else. Yeah, ultra black, ultra red, whatever. I've used this one, but if it's good enough for an oil pan, it's good enough for me. And if it leaks, well, sucks to be me, because I'll be having to do another video so you guys can watch me learn from my mistakes. No matter how you cut this hole, it still sucks on how it comes out. I'm sure there's a trick for this too. You guys know one. I'm open to any suggestions for the future. And I ended up getting a new gasket, but I couldn't find one of those ones that has the metal in it. I thought that's what Felpro made, but the only thing I could find for these four nine inch rears was these stupid cardboard ones, which in my opinion suck. Let's smooth that out a little bit. Probably add a little more over here too. And are we doing this right? The hell does this go? Damn, this doesn't even look like the right gasket. This, it just don't seem to fit clean on here. I guess as long as it doesn't leak, who cares? Well, here comes the fun part. If you're suffering from hemorrhoids or anything else crazy, Probably not a good idea to do this. Or we'll probably get your neighbor to help you. <laughs> Almost there. Rubber mallet would probably help. And we'll just give it just a nice little tap. Make sure it's set. 
Now let's bolt it up. I'm like 99% sure there's definitely an easier way to do that, but hey, it's in. It's all that matters at this point. So, gotta get it bolted down. Got some hardware here. Hopefully we're not missing too much. We're good for right now. We're gonna find another crush washer here. We got our drill, but we need to do some cleaning up here in a little bit, but let's get these started. See if we can get this lined up in here and probably get the shocks down on here and then that'll help us raise it up once we can get it bolted right back up here. All right guys, so let's talk about the axle here for a second. So I'm actually 3D printing something for this Curry axle to figure out what bolt pattern we're gonna use. I'm not really too sure. What's funny is one of the axles actually came pressed on the taper bearing here. The retaining collar was pressed on, but on this one it wasn't. I did reach out to Speedway and Curry. Um, wasn't too happy with the, essentially the solution that was given to me. Tried a 12 ton press, didn't work. Had to opt for a 20 ton, which cost me 60 bucks to actually have somebody press it. So this one's been pressed on, but let's jump over to 3D printer really quick so we can pick up our little automotive part we printed. So if you've never used a 3D printer before, the only thing that actually holds these prints on is uh, stick glue, just like the normal Elmer's glue you get. So sometimes it's hard to get these off. And you have to kind of work them. So it'll probably end up being disposable. Doesn't look like the 3D printer actually did a good job on the bottom here of laying the foundation layer here, but it'll work for what we need. Now you can see here, looks like we might actually have to recalibrate uh, the 3D printer there, but I'll throw that back on the printer for now. So before we go nuts installing our lugs, well, our studs in the back, we've got four, 4.5, four and three quarter, and five. We need to see what the front is on the T-bucket. I don't wanna have two different sizes. I don't wanna have four and three quarter on the back, and I don't wanna have four and a half or four on the front. So we're gonna use this just to double check. So if I remember correctly, on this front end, this Mustang Pinto brake kit, it was four and a half, but I wanna double check and make sure. So yep, it's gonna be four and a half five on four and a half. Pretty cool little tool, isn't it? Now we need to put the studs in using our little 3D tool we printed, just to make sure, again, we're putting it in the right pattern because I don't do this every day. But all you're really gonna need is just a bunch of washers here, nice sacrificial lug, and that little template I made. I should also mention you need some type of impact driver. So we're just gonna use this for here. We don't have a pneumatic setup right now. So we'll take our first stud there. We'll slap it right there. And we'll just check with our template really quick just to make sure we're on the same page. So bam, 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 bam. All right, cool, we got Flintstone mode going on here. Bam, bam. So take that off there. Then we'll take our washer, slide that down, grab the rest of them, put them right down on there. Okay and then take your lug, knit, put that right on there just like that. Pull your washers off, take a look at that. Seated right to the base right there, didn't damage the threads, reuse the washers. Now you may need to get a few more washers because some of them will bend. So just go get a handful from Tractor Supply. Just enough that you can do this essentially 20 times. Now here's where it gets a little tricky with the axle. So we'll go ahead and slide this in here. 
until it hits the splines on the inside. And seats in. So Now I thought I was losing my mind here with this bearing. And it looks like this is supposed to sit on the inside because there's a race on the other side which matches that. But I reached out to Curry and they said no. They specifically said that needs to be on the outside, which is kind of interesting. So we need to get that pushed in a little further. So what I'm doing here is I've actually used that bracket to pull this in a little bit. We can't get the taper bearing seated. This base bracket is gonna wait and eventually it'll get pulled on forward and then it'll pull everything together. It was super complicated getting all this figured out. And then the brake master cylinder, I'm sorry, the brake caliper will mount back here just like that. All right, so using our little tool here, we did check our studs. So we're all good, got those set. We were able to bring the bearing in just a little more, but this plate is so thick that it's just hard to get any thread for some of these bolts. I think this is one of the biggest problems with this brake kit that a lot of people complained about. Was it so universal, but yet so versatile that a lot of people couldn't figure it out. So it caused a little bit of issues here and there with some folks. All right, Gearhead, so we ran into probably a little bit of a significant issue with that rear axle there, which I'll talk about in a little bit, because I'm actually kind of pissed off. But what we can do is go ahead and run the hard brake lines for the rear end part, tap the frame, drill it, and then put our uh, bulkhead fitting through that there. So now I just have to find the parts in our parts bin, but we'll jump back to that axle here in a little bit, and I'll tell you really what's going on with that. So this is what we're using here. It's gonna go right through the frame, and essentially we're just gonna have to drill a hole, and it's a through frame bulkhead fitting with a jam nut there, and then we'll put the A and three fitting on that side here. I don't think it matters which way it goes, but we'll tap the frame. Well, not tap, but we'll drill the frame, push that through there, and then that'll run our hard line down our frame line there. And then on this side, we'll have our A and three fitting that'll come out, and it'll go to whether we're gonna do flexible or what. So pretty interesting little design here. Remember we did our valve system there, then we have our pre-bent brake line here, which will run into a 90. So it essentially just runs right up the frame here. Like I said, we need to run this through the frame. And we have our line set up here, just loose. And then we have a 1 8 MPT to essentially A and 3 that we need to use. So we'll take this here and we'll figure out roughly where we need to be once it's actually pressed against the frame. So we'll have to figure it out once we get it in, but we'll do some rough marks. So it'll sit just like that there, more closer, obviously. But it looks like we're gonna be about right here. So let me do some smite measurements really quick and then pull out the punch. We'll pop a hole right through there. So we'll get ourselves a little pilot hole here going. It went a lot smoother than I thought it would. So we'll push this through. Got most of the metal cleaned out on top there. And push that through just like that. And we'll take our jam nut. Put that right just like that. And this will spin on just right here. So looks like we're gonna have to tighten that up on the other side before we can finish spinning that on there. closer look of what we got going on once it leaves the valve and the master cylinder there. So again, it does come up, follows the frame rail, goes through the through bulkhead fitting there with the jam nut. And on the other side there, we have our AN3, which will pop off, cut down with a 90 degree. And then we may do hard lines here, or I may run it out on each side there.
talk about this damn axle here that I'm totally pissed off about. So essentially we tried to get it in and jam it in and then tighten it down. But after I noticed some of the pieces weren't actually seating, I started looking here and I saw that they pressed the retaining ring down way too far, the place I took this to. Now, I specifically told him, don't press it past that. It needs to be up to that. But when you get it to go in, this does not seat. This sticks out. Therefore, this compression bracket here does not seat perfectly on there. But let's look at the other side. So I did finish this one here, which we'll have to save the other one till another time there, but went together pretty good, pretty quick. This axle here was the one that was actually pressed by Curry. Had absolutely zero issues. Imagine that. So there's the bracket and it sits pretty well. Both sides have an emergency brake, but I don't know how I'm gonna handle that one just yet. Look who just conveniently showed up. Let's talk about the motor for a little bit. Boy, is it hot again. Super, super hot. Can't wait till Florida winter time. Then it drops down to like 90. So as I told you in the last one, I had some issues with the starter. Uh, so I bought another starter. The old one was huge, but I ended up getting just a Jegs brand one for the small block. Now, what's funny about this is the starter itself is much smaller. And imagine that. It's made in the USA, in Milwaukee, actually. Doesn't even look cheap or feel cheap. It actually feels pretty good. Now, compared to the old iron one, yeah, that one's like, uh, that one weighs like 200 pounds. Now, I also ended up getting our uh, positive and negative cables, which we're gonna run all the way from the back to the front of the vehicle. It's actually a pretty good deal on this stuff. Super crazy, it's zero gauge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's zero gauge. And it's not solid strand, but it'll work for what we're doing. So. Coincidentally, another item just came in. Well, let's check out and see what we got, because this is a big one. And this is gonna lead into episode three, which we're actually gonna start making some serious, serious progress. And we have here an aluminum 14 gallon fuel tank. Let's set it in the place and see what it looks like. Now this thing is pretty, pretty sweet. So I was looking at the outside of the box, so I think this is the one item that I've purchased so far that's actually made in China. Surprisingly, a lot of this stuff that I've been purchasing for the tea bucket kit is all made in the USA, but still very, very good welds. And I can't confirm it's made in China, but it looks like a Chinese box, but still very, very clean on the aluminum. So. Here's where the gauge float's gonna mount in. It did come with a gauge float. I think that's gonna be our pickup. Actually, I think that's our pickup there. And then that's gonna be our spill, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at the instructions there. Nice little cap here. And just take a nice little peek in there. So we'll get that cleaned out with some fuel when we're completely ready to mount it. But it's got the tabs, it is the channeled one here. And then there's a bracket on this side here for the actual battery tray that's gonna go right there. So we did get some fuel lines. We'll run our fuel line. We're gonna do A and six off of this to a rubber hose. We're gonna do a hard line pretty much down the frame to the front. And then for the motor, we'll do A and six again off the pump. So, yep, A and six, just what I thought. I think that's A and six, right? Yep. That's it, but the thing looks actually pretty cool. Very happy with that. And it was super affordable. It wasn't too expensive, break, big, ah, break the bank kind of situation. But this thing is really, really, really starting to come together. I'm really happy. All right, guys, so that's it for this episode. I really wanted to get to that motor. I know we couldn't, but we did get a lot done in it. I'll probably be heading out and more than likely getting a press I know it's one of those things I'm thinking I'm only going to use it once, but now that I look back in life, there's probably so many things I could use it for. So we'll get that rear axle fixed. We'll start working on episode four, motor transmission drop. See you guys next time.